I didn't know there was a Russian guy uh, who was doing the voiceover. That's very interesting. Um, honestly, it's just people who I think saw it and said, hey, people should understand this, so I'm gonna put subtitles under it. And uh, I've seen a couple. I've seen French, I've seen Spanish, uh, seen Welsh. No, I'm kidding. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just something people want to spread the word. That's fine. They keep asking me permission, like, I'm gonna say, no! It's, it's fine. You want to put subtitles in the language? That's great. Just try to follow it as best as you can. Um, yeah, so I got no problem with it. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> that, th this is still shocking. It, it's weird to go to a con, a convention, and see people dressed up like you. It's very, very odd. Uh, but, but it's very, uh, sad. Not satisfying. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Now, I I'm very grateful for it. I'm very, that's not the word either. Very happy. Let's just use, you know, small words. <laughs> it's very nice to see, let's say that. Uh, it's very nice to see people dressed up and showing so much support. Uh, when this all started out, it sort of started out with the five second movies on YouTube and I got a lot of views. I knew it was just good to keep all the people who kept coming to see it. I had all these really dedicated viewers and I knew it was good to keep them. I didn't know why. I didn't know it was going to explode into this. Um, but yeah, I didn't know it'd be quite this big. I didn't know if I got any fame that was going to be on the internet. I think that's awesome to be a part of such a new medium. Uh, so I I'm... I'm ecstatic about it. I think it's really, really awesome. I came up with the idea of uh, how to be a pirate mostly because when we moved, uh, they left this wall out, the people used to live here, and there's just these really big, cool drawings, and I said, I gotta do something with this. This is too awesome to let go. So I was looking at it saying, well, what can I do with this? Sort of looks like drawing on a bar, maybe. Maybe kind of a piratey bar. So I pretty much just came up with it from there. And I'm not too concerned about running out of ideas because the whole pirate culture, I mean, it's just so big right now. There's so many things you can talk about. Talk about guns, tattoos, beards, accents, ships. All sorts of things, so, uh, no, I'm not worried about running out of ideas. General Zod sort of came to me just one time a long time ago before I was even filming anything. I just, I grew my beard out like this, I grew it on the sides. And I got out of the shower, I had my hair sort of back. And I said, oh my god, I look like Zod. I look like General Zod. I have to do something with this. So that was years ago, and just back in my head, I'm always thinking, gotta do something with Zod. And finally, when Christmas came, a lot, uh, came around, uh, there's always, that's a big time for ads, so the more videos you can have, the better. Uh, so I decided to do this thing where General Zod reacts to Christmas and call it Merry Zodmas. And uh, he's a lot of fun to do. Uh, most of the writing on there, actually, it's done by both... Uh, my brother Rob and me, but most of that is him. I think because secretly he really does want to take over the world, but uh, yeah, a lot of the writing was just coming to his head real fast and he was sort of feeding me lines. So yeah, will you see him more in the future? I'd be shocked if you didn't. Uh, he's way too funny a character and that costume already costs a pretty penny, so we're probably gonna milk it for all it's worth. Who said I have time for other things? <laughs> I actually, my off time actually is very boring. Uh, I like to just do natural stuff, I guess. Like just go hang out at a bar, talk with friends, like, you know, hang out with my fiance, chat. That's really what I like to do most. Um, I don't have a ton of other hobbies. I think the only thing I really do is draw because I used to be an illustrator. Uh, but to be honest, I always tell people this, my real life is probably really boring. <laughs> I think, honestly, I just love to work. I love doing this. I love that this is, uh, you know, my full-time job, sort of turn your hobby into your living. So, uh, yeah, really my off time is also what I do while I'm working half the time. I'll answer the second 
part of that first. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, there's a video of me quitting my job where it was in a car factory. I go in, I play 2001 A Space Odyssey on the stereo I'm carrying, I rip open my shirt, and it says, I quit written on my chest, so the reason I did that, and this is important, uh, was not because the job was that bad. The job was fine. Uh, it's the fact that this one guy, the guy I was working with, was constantly trying to get me fired. He actually got the last three or four people fired before, because he wanted the extra hours. So finally, when I got in there, nobody believed him, because he gets it, what, four people now are, are terrible workers? I mean, come on. So... Finally, they stopped believing him, but I could hear him, you know, badmouthing me all the time. He'd smile at me at like I was his friend, but then he'd go and badmouth me to like the supervisor or something. So uh, that was mainly for him, and he was in that room when I did that big thing where I ripped open my shirt. So uh, that that was definitely for him. Uh, at what point did I realize I could make a living out of it? I didn't. That was Mike Mashad, the guy who runs Channel Awesome. He came to me and pretty much said, you can make a living on this, I, it, it, give us a chance, we can sort of make this happen. And, and I did, and it, it took, you know, a little bit of sacrifice. I, I had to put aside my uh, uh, illustration job, that's what I was doing at the time, I was doing freelance illustration, and I had to put that aside, not really take any clients, put a lot of things on credit cards for a while, and sure enough, he came through. And like I said, this is my full-time gig, and it's awesome, and uh, you can even argue it's better than doing illustration because you just have total creative freedom. And again, that's Channel Awesome, that's Mike Mashad, that, that's these great people that are just like, D do whatever. You know, just make it funny, ma make it your thing. And they're, they're really good about that. There's very few times where they come down and so you can't do that. I mean, I, I can probably count it on one hand, probably one finger. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's, it, it's... Great working with them, man. It's an awesome, awesome job. Uh, new ideas is sort of a um, interesting term. Like, there are a few times where I got writer's block, and I think it's very obvious when I have. For example, in Junior, the movie was just giving us no material. It was very boring. It was very dull. I don't know how you screw up Arnold Schwarzenegger pregnant, but they found a way. And we just put in the song called Boring for half the video, and it didn't go over that well. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny, but... Um, yeah, there's a few times where I get writer's block, and... I think I figure if I just say what's obviously wrong about it, that'll sort of help, but... I think the main thing now is pointing out what's obviously wrong, and sort of playing with it, seeing how far you can push that joke, and how far you can stretch it and milk it, so... That seems to be the thing now. There was a, a period of time, I think maybe uh, sort of mid last year, I do sort of recall, I thought just sort of stating the obvious, like this is what what you see, just let the scene play out for itself, was going to be enough. But a lot of times I find that's not, maybe because I've shown so many strange things, uh, that's not the case anymore. So I do find I have to work a little harder for the jokes now, which is good. I mean, you always want to get better. Um, but in terms of writer's block, there's been a few times, but, uh, I'm finding out more and more if I just sit there, really think about it, just sort of let the idea come to you, uh, you should come out with something good. I think we're always gonna try and make it bigger, the yearly anniversary's bigger. At some point, I'm sure we'll run out of making things bigger. I'm not even sure if we can top kick ass. Yeah, we're gonna try anyway. Um, but yeah, again, that's part of the writer's block and the, the getting creative. If you can't get big in the budget, you get big in other ways. So, although we are gonna have more of a budget, but I digress. Um, we'll see what happens. I'd like to see them get bigger and bigger, but at the same time, you just want to tell a good story, a good funny story, and you don't want to just keep topping yourself. But if you can do both, that's ideal. I, I don't know if I see myself that much as a voice actor. There's a few voices I can do, but there's... By voice acting, um... You know, well, what's the word I'm looking for? By On the scale of voice acting, I'm not that high up there. There's a lot of people that can just do a bajillion voices. I got, like, five or six or something like that. So I think everybody has a couple voices in them. 
Um, and really just any, any of the acting just comes from watching and sort of studying stuff that I enjoy. You know, there's a lot of cartoons I like, there's a lot of slapstick I like, there's a lot of, uh, uh, live action comedy I like and sketches and so forth. So it's just watching those and analyzing what worked here, what didn't work here, why did this get a laugh out of me, why did this not? And it's not that I always put it into words, I don't have to put into words why it got a laugh out of me, but I just have to, I have to know it, I have to watch it and acknowledge, oh, here's, if this was a second longer, this wouldn't work, but because it was at this point and this person had this reaction, this was funny. So, uh, really just watching things that I enjoy and I hate to say studying because I'm not writing it down, but yeah, definitely observing why something worked uh, definitely helps. Everything outside of Nostalgia Critic is pretty much made up. Um, parts of how to be a pirate, like the uh, Blood Beer Joe stuff, I is from the fans, and the questions for Ask That Guy from the fans, but the answers and the reactions is all improvised. Um, I don't know why, there's just a... I think with, for example, like Video Game Confessions, uh, I tried it written out once. It was the very first one, the Mario one, and it didn't seem very natural, it didn't really flow. And there's something about the unexpectedness and the delivery when it's on the spot that makes it a little funnier, I think. So that's why uh, I do it all uh, with improv. And also, it just goes faster, too, than having to ride it out, get it down. How would I say this? Is this correct? Print it out, memorize it, say it to the camera. It's just easier if you could just say it, you know, just say what's on your mind. And I think when you sit down and write something, you an sometimes you analyze a little too much, or you forget how a line was supposed to be said. Actually, that's happened a lot with Nostalgia Critic. Uh, I write out a line, and when I'm writing it at the time, it's really funny, but then when I go film it, I totally forget what the delivery is. So, so there's a lot of advantages to improvising. With Nostalgia Critic, that's all written. Very rarely do I improvise stuff. Um, but there's one or two times, for example, like the... Uh, in the Sonic Adventures of Sonic review, when I just shout pumpkin, I, I think I just wrote in there, pumpkin what? And that was it. But, you know, so I have a clip of me going, pumpkin what? And that's it. But then, you know, do a few other takes. Pumpkin what? Pumpkin what? Do another one. Pumpkin what? 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 Pumpkin what? You know, and that's great. That's improvised, and you can tell it doesn't look rehearsed. It looks very natural and, and shocked. So that's why a lot of times I find, too, you have to do a lot of various takes on these because a lot of times the version that you think is funny, the version that's going to be, wow, this sounds great right now, when you edit it together, it's not always. So it's good to have backups of different deliveries uh, so that when you see it as a whole, hey, this, this didn't work, luckily I have this much calmer take to put in there, or hey, the calmer take doesn't work, let's put in the really big exaggerated one. So, uh, improvising a, a little bit is, is always good for a nostalgia critic, but that is written out, uh, because that is, those are jokes I have to, that, that's a whole movie review. And just to sort of go from memory, especially when you see the film, it's not wise. Um, and it's combining two writers there, too, because my brother writes it as well. So, it, it's good to have that very, um... Uh, well put together and, and planned, not, not as improvised, so, but there is a little bit. I have not seen the original Japanese Sailor Moon with the original uh, language in there, but it still looks pretty dumb. Even if they're saying, like, incredibly intelligent things, I think it would still be a dumb show. <laughs> I, I don't know, it, it looked pretty silly to me, but I guess that's sort of what started the anime explosion, so what can you say? Uh, uh, Lori Prince? I think you're talking about Lori Prince. Uh, in terms of Lori Prince, I think we got one more in us, but I sort of found that it took a lot more time than we thought. It's not that they didn't get a lot of views, they did fine. Uh, it was just really, really difficult to keep them going. At first we were going to sort of do it like every other week, and then it's like, man, this is taking two weeks to do one of these, and that just eats up so much time. 
uh, it takes away from other projects like Nostalgia Critic and Ask That Guy and so forth. So we probably have one more in us. We've talked about doing one more. Um, I don't know when, we'll have to see. Uh, but yeah, you can probably see one more at some point. For the how to be a pirate, that really is beer, but it's Bud Light, so I'm not wasting good beer. Um, in uh, in the It review, that was apple juice, and I did pour out the uh, uh, the Knob Creek there uh, into another container. I didn't get rid of it, uh, and yeah, just poured apple juice in there. I was toying with the idea of maybe getting really drunk during that review, but... I said, nah, that's, let's be professional. That's not going to be as funny as I think it's going to be. So, um, yeah, may, maybe, uh, maybe at some other point someone will just film me when I'm really drunk. And that'll be hilarious, but uh, when trying to do a review, not, not such a good idea. I think you're asking, like, are there any family members that see me as, like, the nostalgia critic? No, I mean... Family and friends always see me as Doug. Uh, sometimes, like, I'll get to know a fan really, really well. Actually, Orlando Bilal, he started off as a fan. Uh, he's the guy who played um, uh, the angel in the Christmas special. Uh, he started off as a fan, uh, but I really got to like him. I got to like his girlfriend as well, and we hang out all the time. And I found out he was an actor. I said, let's, you know, let's try this then. And we did a Christmas special that turned out great. So, he started off as a fan. I think he sees me more now as Doug, though, not really the critic. So, uh, that's about as close as it gets. There aren't a ton of fans that I go to, like, you know, anxiously hang out with. Uh, he's probably the only one. Maybe there's another in there somewhere, but he's the only one that jumps to mind. Guys, thank you so much for having me. Keep up the good work. You are awesome.